Is NASCAR wasting everyone's time with this Phoenix test? NASCAR is hosting a test this week at Phoenix, and I'll be honest, it seems like it might just be a colossal waste of everyone's time that is there. They could have just spent their time watching all the seasons of Lost because they would have come to the same conclusion of, why do we do this? It makes no sense. We could have just all stayed home and saved our time. Instead, they went out to Phoenix to test the short track and road course package for 2024 and find ways to improve it, to enhance the package over what we saw in 2023 and in 2022, which were lackluster to say the best. So instead, they've gone out for a two-day test, and they were going to test aero changes, tires, transaxle, and mufflers. And while well, they got to three of the four, they didn't make it to the transaxle portion of it, which we'll talk about in a minute. So instead, on day one, they tested out a new simplified diffuser and a different splitter on the front. Drivers seem to like the new simplified diffuser, so much so that on day two, they wanted to say, hey, let us test it with the current splitter, the one that we ran in 2023, with this new diffuser. So NASCAR said, sure, we'll do that, and we'll go ahead and scrap the transaxle plans. The whole idea for the transaxle was to cut down and reduce the amount of shifting that cars do on short tracks, which is pretty detrimental to the racing if you watch short tracks recently. And they decided not to do that. One, because they wanted to focus on this aero change, which again, feels like a little tiny baby step. But instead, they wanted to go ahead and scrap that because teams didn't feel like the corner speeds were high enough for to really justify testing it, which I understand, which that sounds more like a gearing issue as well. However, the transaxle issue still needs to be you know, tested at some point. It needs to be tried out to see if we can limit the amount of shifting that happens on short tracks, because like I said, I feel like it's pretty detrimental to the product that we see on track. So they went ahead and they tested out the new Aero pro or products. Different splitter, different diffuser. They seem to like those. Maybe they'll make a difference. So on Tuesday, Cole Cusamano, who is a freelancer in NASCAR, was out in Phoenix for the test. He spoke with Kyle Larson, and Larson said, you know, I didn't really see a difference between what we tested today and what we raced with back in November. On the other side, Ryan Blaney said that he felt like what they tested was a step in the right direction over what they raced in Phoenix. So either way, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that big of a change. And granted, what we saw in Phoenix in the fall was way better than what we saw at Phoenix in the spring. So there were steps made throughout the season that definitely helped the product. Maybe this will help it out a little bit more, but it's not that grand slam, home run, big swing that NASCAR needs to take. Instead, they're taking a check swing here and just doing the safe conservative thing. We all know that more horsepower is more than likely the answer. I mean, even Steve Phelps, NASCAR's president, said just that, but he doesn't believe the drivers. He said drivers say they need more horsepower. I don't know if I believe that. And that's the problem right there is the fact that he's not listening to what the drivers and the teams say. Is it going to cost more money? Doesn't matter. Racing's inherently expensive to begin with. And these same engine, the same engine formula used to make 750 to 800 horsepower, made 750 horsepower just a couple of years ago. Wasn't that difficult then. There's no reason they can't do it now. And we already saw what happens when you increase the horsepower 120 over that 550 horsepower package that the Gen 7 car initially tested with at Phoenix and the 670 horsepower package that they currently have. The racing got a lot better. The cars were more drivable. Imagine that, going faster, having to use the throttle, brake, lift, all that is inducive of making, conducive, conducive of making good racing. But NASCAR doesn't see it that way. Instead, they want to keep tweaking on the arrow. And that's just always sort of the cop out, right? That's supposed to be the easier solution, the, the one that's going to cost the less money. It's going to take up the less, uh, least amount of time. And it just doesn't really ever produce the big changes that we need to see. NASCAR, like I said, needs to take a big swing at things. They need to take a big step forward in terms of the on-track product that we see at road courses and short tracks. And instead, they're taking baby steps. And not even like those big thunderous baby steps, you know what I'm talking about? They're taking those little like baby shuffle steps. I know nothing about babies. I just assume that like when babies walk, they just kind of trundle along. Uh, look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, how he walks, just but in tiny human form got off track there, but they need to take a big chance and they're just not doing that. And putting in higher horsepower would kind of negate having to test out aero tires and maybe the transaxle issue because you're going to be going faster in the corners. I mean, you're going to be lifting. You're going to burn through these tires faster. All of that is good things, right? And instead NASCAR refuses to go that route because there's likely one OEM that's pushing back on the whole idea of increasing horsepower. And instead, they're going to stick with this new aero package, which is really kind of underwhelming. 
right? It's like seeing the trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6 and then it being like, it doesn't come out until 2025 and you're like, oh my God, that could be two years from now. It won't be two years now, it'll be like 18 months. But still, it's a really long time and it's really frustrating because you're like, I just want this to be better now. And instead you get NASCAR things, which is not getting better. So teams also tested out mufflers as well. Uh, not new mufflers, but new duct work on the mufflers to try to you know reroute some of the heat and everything like that. And fans lost their minds in typical NASCAR fan fashion. They're like, cars are meant to be loud. If you don't go to the racetrack expecting it to be loud, that's on you. Motorsports meant to be deafening, blah, blah, blah. I'll be honest, that sounds like a lot of people that haven't heard the Gen 7 car in person because it is one of the loudest cars out there. It's substantially louder than the Gen 6 car, substantially louder than the Gen 5 car at that. Gen 7 NASCAR Cup cars are very loud. And they already ran mufflers in 2023. People are losing their mind, like, oh, this is the death of NASCAR, here goes NASCAR, put a nail in their coffin, blah, 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 not gonna last another five years. They ran mufflers at the LA Coliseum in 23 and the Chicago Street Course. Nobody said anything because nobody could tell the difference. It knocks about 10 decibels off of the sound. And I'll be completely honest, I would like to be able to go to a racetrack and not have to scream in the ear of the person sitting next to me like I'm a maniac so that they can hear what I'm trying to say. I don't want it to be golf course quiet out there. I don't want to have to be able to just go like, hey, how's it going? You guys see that pass right there? That was pretty cool. I get it, racing's loud, but I shouldn't have to scream in the ear of somebody like I'm trying to yell into Helen Keller's face to get her attention. It just makes no sense. Why would you want to go to an event where you can't hear or say anything to the person sitting next to you? And tracks like Daytona and Talladega, road courses are different, right? Cars go past you you get a little bit of time to be able to talk to the person next to you. But if you're at Bristol, Martinsville, Richmond, uh, even like there's some mile and a half so when the field gets stretched out, yeah, it's hard to talk to the person next to you. I saw somebody in my Twitter replies was like, oh, I've been going to racetracks for 50 years, never use hearing protection, and I can hear just fine. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. But if you're going to a racetrack, use hearing protection for sure. People that are just out here raw dogging it, taking in all the sounds, that's insane to me. You're going to be walking around with tinnitus, and I don't know what tinnitus sounds like, but apparently it's really painful, and I would not want to have that just constant ringing in my ear. So they tested out new mufflers, and honestly, there was a pretty, there was like, it took away that like screech portion of like the, the higher RPM sounds. Maybe it made it a little bit duller, which is fine by me. So at the end of the day, NASCAR went out for two days, and thankfully, right, Phoenix is close to the home base of NASCAR in Mooresville and Concord and Charlotte, North Carolina, so they just made the quick trip over to Arizona, not that it's 2,000 miles away, did a test for a couple days, put everybody up in hotels, and I will drive 2,000 miles back, fly six crews back home, and yeah, call it, a, call it a successful test. And of course they did it out there because it's warmer, I get that, everything that goes along with it, but like... If you're gonna test a short track package, there's some tracks in Florida that you could use, there's some tracks in Georgia you could use, Alabama, even North Carolina. And you know, it's gonna be a touch warmer, sure, in Phoenix, but you could have saved a lot of money keeping them close to home. Not my money though, so I don't care. Go ahead and spend the money. It just feels like we went out there for two days, the industry did at least, and honestly doesn't feel like they accomplished a lot, which is, feels like it's on brand, unfortunately. So hopefully what they discovered will at least be a step in the right direction. Is it gonna revolutionize everything? Absolutely not, I mean, it's certainly not. Banning the shift in new bases and a pitch count, that, that revolutionized baseball, brought all the fans back. If NASCAR could find something to do like that, they would be out here championing for Steve Phelps to be kept forever. And I don't think anybody's actually doing that. Although he's done an okay job. He just really needs to focus on like the on-track product, which would be beneficial. So regardless, NASCAR went out there and tested a few things. Uh, maybe the new diffuser worked. The new splitter didn't seem to do what they wanted it to do. The transaxle idea got tossed in the trash can for the time being. And they tested new mufflers. Well, new duct work on the existing mufflers and then fans lost their minds like they were trying to ban the shift or the the Philly tush push or something like that. So regardless, typical NASCAR story. Not much got accomplished. They went out and did a bunch of things and we're still kind of where we were left at in the beginning. So yeah, we went in a circle, apropos. 
Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Bowling.